Hi there. Uh, it's Kelvin Potter with Raven Farm Sawmill. I'm just uh, making this video to talk about this um, wood miser dual tooth setter. It's got the manual crank. Uh, it comes with an electric option, but I didn't see the need for that personally. I like to monitor the uh, set on each tooth uh, kind of more carefully. I saw a lot of junk logs that have tramp metal in them, so we're damaging a lot of teeth. And uh, I know this isn't the greatest video quality here with my junk in the background, but I don't have a lot of space, so we'll have to uh, ignore all that. But anyways, uh, I was just going to show a um, quick overview of me using uh, this new setter and kind of talk about why I think uh, it was worth the probably, maybe it was at just under $2,000 for this machine. Um, setting your own teeth probably is more critical than people realize. A while ago, a, a fellow sawmiller showed me some bands he had taken to have sharpened, and uh, they were sharp, but they wouldn't cut. And when I put uh, a manual gauge on the uh, bandsaw blade, I could tell right away there was no set left. So every time you sharpen the blade, you lose a few thousands of set. Uh, so we know that the setter is important, but uh, it's uh, probably you would spend more money on the setter than the sharpener itself. And I'll kind of go through some of my reasoning on that. Um, uh, I have a friend who makes bows and uh, maybe this analogy m might help. He said that a arrow is more important than a bow because a crappy bow will shoot a good arrow fairly well, but a really good bow will shoot a bad arrow bad no matter what. So uh, his point was pay attention to your arrows. Um, making sure that they're tuned and they do all sorts of things with that. But uh, anyways, uh, the set is critical to sawing flat and as we know with the narrow band saw blades of today's portable sawmills, um, wave is the problem, not cutting a flat surface, a flat board, especially now that we are getting into wider and wider cuts. And I'll show in another video, I had modified my Wood Miser LT40 Super Diesel by cutting the head and extending it out six inches to match Wood Miser's new wide head bandsaw setup. And with that <coughs> wider cut, you have to be very careful in your blade selection and, and in particular, the set. The wider the cut, the more set we want. It allows for flatter cutting and the results are pretty quickly seen if you use a standard blade with a standard set and then switch over to a blade that you've widened the set on, especially maybe slabbing pine logs, which I do. They're popular. We cut a lot of wide, big pine, um, very soft wood in between very hard knots, causes the bandsaw blades to become unstable, and you get that wavy cut. And the wavy cut causes a lot more headaches downstream uh, than I like to handle. I mean, I do my own processing. You're sending a slab that's maybe 30 inches wide through a planer, you want it to go through as quickly as possible. You're carrying this thing back and forth. Uh, it's pretty self-defeating to start with a slab that is wavy. And we've all been there. We know about it. Um, I'm on my fourth wood miser sawmill. I've gone through a bunch of different generations of sawmills. And um, maybe on a different video, we'll talk about that. But right now, the <clears throat> BMT 200 dual tooth setter from Wood Miser um, allows me to control my set. Uh, 
there's a dial gauge on each tooth. Um, I think this, from my research, gave me the most control over the set. I've tried some cheaper dual tooth setters. The, the set from tooth to tooth variation was too great. Couldn't control to the tight tolerance as I was used to. I was using a single tooth setter from Woodmiser. Came with my drag type sharpener. Uh, I really like that. You have control over each tooth with a dial in the cage right behind it. You know exactly what the set is on each tooth, but it took a lot of time and was cumbersome. Um, this machine makes it so you can set a band in just a couple of minutes. The variation is a little bit greater than the single tooth setter, but I think it is uh, within tolerances to make these flat wide cuts and maintain bandsaw speed. You know, we've all tried that slowing down the cut rate to keep the, the, the surface flat. That works so much, but um, <laughs> that only can do so much. We need to cut as flat as we can, as fast as we can, for as long as we can. So uh, doing so, I like to set my wide bandsaw blades and I definitely recommend the one and a half inch depth blade on these uh, turbo charged super diesels you know you do need a big engine to pull um, the band with a larger set and um, bigger teeth you know we want the feed rate, we want it flat, we want the bandsaw to be as strong as we can. Now, I do have the 19-inch wheels on the LT40 models. I believe you have to get to the LT70 before you can get the larger wheels that allow the 55,000th band body blades to survive without fatigue failure. Um, I've tried the 55,000s. They do break quite easily on the 19 inch band wheels of the Woodmiser 40 series and I think the 50 series is 19 still. So the 45,000 standard blade with one and a half inch set and in the seven degree, the old style seven degree because uh, I have the old drag style sharpener and apparently Woodmiser told me I couldn't sharpen the turbo sevens with that type of profile. You need their new CBN wheels and the new sharpener, but I'm content so far with the seven degree with the old style drag sharpener. And I will um, run a band around this uh, just quickly here, uh, as this is kind of more about the fundamentals of setting and what's most critical here. So let me grab a band here. This does happen to be a 55 thousandths band. I do run 55 thousandths on the widest cuts just to make those few cuts and then I immediately pull it off and sharpen it again to remove any fatigue cracks and I do get some life out of them they do saw much flatter than the 45 thousandths I'm interested in the 50 thousandths but so far I've, the word is that they only make that in the turbo 7 which I can't sharpen so I'm still trying to find maybe a blade that is a little bit thicker but not the 55 thousandths. My friend uh, also just bought a new LT50 and was running the 55 thousandths uh, on the 19 inch wheels and he's getting some breakage though maybe it doesn't seem to be as much as mine. My machine is ancient and probably not as good a tolerance as and setting as his is. Um, so He's getting more life out of them, but they're still breaking. So I, I think the key might be that 50 thousandths. I don't know, Woodmiser doesn't seem to be making very many profiles in that yet, but I think they may. Um, so why the big difference between 45 thousandths and 55 thousandths? Well, I can tell you uh, proof is in the pudding and it makes a big difference uh, in sawing flat and feed speed on my particular sawmill. Uh, I have not tried the 50 thousandths. 
I do know that going from one and a quarter inch width bands to the one and a half tremendously increases beam strength. And it's that beam strength that these thin, low curve uh, or narrow bandsaw blades rely on to saw flat. And if you're running a 25 horsepower gas motor, you probably have to deal with that narrower, smaller blade. You might be able to run the one and a half. I guess maybe there's no reason that would require more horsepower. But definitely as you increase the set and um, the tooth profile gets more aggressive and the gullet's deeper, like in the Turbo 7, they're not recommending that on the smaller horsepower machines, which a lot of you might have out there. So um, I still might try the seven degree old standard seven in an inch and a half uh, width in the 45 thousandths double hard blade uh, and increasing your set. And I set this at 30 thousandths to each side and then I sharpen after that. And the burrs always cause me a problem. I don't have a good way of removing that before I uh, reset it and, and, and that burr does throw off the setting if you don't get it off of there and there's ways to do it. Woodmiser suggests rubbing a hardwood block around the outside edge and I've done that um, but I'm getting good results so I cut this uh, set at 30 thousandths. I rely on pretty heavy grinding uh, to take off a few thousandths so I think we're ending up with a 28 thousandths and if I remember right, Woodmiser's set out of the box is kind of like 24,000. So that additional amount allows more band clearance um, in these wider cuts. I think it allows the blade to perform better. Um, I haven't done extensive experiments, but uh, done some. So uh, let me grab this blade here. 